Bands. Those are skater shoes. What's that? Skater shoes. Skater shoes. Sure, so sure. we have somebody that's been around skaters, unless you're skating. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Not there right are steps. Now. So <laughs> bands. Maybe bowling shoes. What's that? Could be bowling shoes too. No, well, I don't know about bowling, but let's take a look. Oh, okay. very similar to Converse, don't they? In fact, they are so similar, if you actually didn't know, you wouldn't know. But the positioning, the brand positioning between Converse and Vans are dramatically different. All right? And then next. Oh, I've never heard of that. Those of you that have seen my presentation before, don't let out on the secret. But Valley, anybody know? The casino or the fitness center? Neither. Dress shoes. What's that? Dress shoes. Dress shoes. Somebody's heard about his work. This might be the reason we don't know about them. This my, my point here is that. Come on, they have shoes. Oh, the <laughs> point's in the wrong place. That's three dollars and ninety-five cents. The point here, though, is these are all major brands in the world. But if the brand is not relevant to you, it means absolutely nothing. All right. So if you're not in the market for a four hundred pair of four hundred dollar pair of loafers or shoes, I'm not. It's not on my radar, right? And so that's something I want you to think about as we talk about branding, because as your brand, as you start to seek out customers, if what you're trying to sell isn't relevant and doesn't resonate with them, then they aren't going to be paying attention. So that's a very important factor that we're going to be talking about here. What comes to mind? Mustang. Mustang, right? Fine. California. Circa 1965. So some of the things about the Mustang, right? Big engine, fast car, muscle car, right? Cruising with the top down. So there's some other benefits besides the fact that it can get you down the road. It can probably get you a date, right? There's all sorts of things. So there's, there's other reasons that we seek out products besides the functional benefits. Sometimes there are emotional benefits. And there's also something called self-expressive, meaning we want to be seen carrying that little Tiffany's gold box, right? Even if there's nothing in it, we just carry the box. Oh yeah, it's Tiffany's. So, now what's this? That's the Mustang. Today, the point here that I'm trying to make is that Ford is still holding true to the brand positioning from 1965 to today. They have not changed it. So sometimes you don't have to muck with it for the sake of mucking with it. If it's working, it works. All right? I'm going to get a mile and a half of work at it and walk into this computer. All right, so who said? General Electric. General Electric. General Electric, right? Just, it's in your head. Yes. It's, it's locked in there, right? You're right, GE. <coughs> now who said that? IBM. No, no, IBM. No, G GE. GE. Oh, General Intel, I think. Intel. Oh, no. The point here I'm making is that for decades, GE pushed that other slogan on us, and it's ingrained in our head. This is their latest slogan. Now, if we do this, let's get together 50 years from now, <laughs> and I'm going to put that up there, and what's going to happen? Every one of you are going to know the answer. Yeah. It <coughs> depends on whether they keep it. That's right. They'll change it. A slogan is a reflection of the brand. It isn't necessarily the brand itself. But it's interesting. This is a big company spending a lot of money, and now one person in this room goes, oh, GE. So it takes a while to, to change. And, and one of the things about branding, branding is not sales, which I can do today, and it's not marketing that I can do tomorrow. Branding is an ongoing, long-term process. It starts today, but it goes on for a very, very long period of time. In fact, perpetuity. All right, who owns these brands? Oh, well. Some big Procter and Gamble. Whoever it is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Who owns these brands? Procter and Gamble. Oh God. Oh. 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 Gillette. Oh. Whoa. But Jim, I'm gonna have to give you some style points on that one. <laughs> Who owns Gillette? That is, Procter, that is and Gamble. Procter and Gamble. Procter and Gamble. Yeah. That's right. Some companies don't care that you don't know who they are. 
Procter & Gamble is one of those kind of branding companies. Last count, they had 200 brands under their umbrella. And they could care less if you know it's P or G. They just want you to know that it's Tide, Crest, Pampers, whatever it might be. And what's really nice, if you think about it, they're constantly introducing new products into the marketplace. Some are big hits and others are failures. If that product goes away, what's it do to the P&G brand? We don't have a clue, do we? It doesn't affect it at all. It doesn't affect it at all. Some people today don't know that an Edsel was made by Ford. That's right. <clears throat> Wasn't that his son's name or something? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, one of the sons. Alright, so now let's take a look at slogans. First one, the computer for the rest was 1984. What was that? <laughs> Why did they have that slogan? Macintosh. What's that? Macintosh. Introduction of the Macintosh, right? What was, what was there before? Was the PC and DOS. Things that we absolutely loved, remember? <laughs> um, and then 10,000 songs in your pocket? iPod. 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 I'll say you're in good hands. They still use that. Mm -hmm. They still use it, that's my point, 2000 BC. Mm -hmm. It's been there forever. <laughs> Again, if it works, you don't have to necessarily change it. Think how long it's going to take GE to get that slogan known the other way. Mm -hmm. And then down at the bottom, things go better with Coke. We all know that one, right? Now, open happiness. That's what's happening today. So, my joke is that they want to try to get you away from the fact that it's got tons of calories, it's going to wreck your teeth and all these kinds of things. They want you to think about oh, how good you feel when you go to the dentist because your teeth are falling out. Coke has had several different slogans over the years. Oh yeah, years. over the years. So. But this is what they're doing now. And this is one that they use when they intrude on you when you go to the movies and pay 12 bucks and then you get to see their ad. So you and go really buy a Coke for six bucks. <laughs> at that time. Okay, so just for a second, ponder in your mind what you think some of the top brands in the world are today. In fact, let's name a few as a group. Let's see Apple if we can. And Nike. What's that? Apple and Nike. Apple, Nike. IBM. IBM. Intel. Toyota. Who Intel. else? Toyota. Intel. McDonald's. Maybe McDonald's. Intel, McDonald's. Anybody yeah. else? General Electric. General Motors. What do you think number one is? Microsoft. Oh. Um, Procter and Gamble. No. <laughs> Something about happiness. Coke. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. Pepsi's bad. Google, man. So yeah. we mentioned IBM. <laughs> We mentioned McDonald's, we mentioned Apple, Disney, even globally. Little Mouse is all over the place. And what's interesting, Google, young company, but look at how high it is, and Apple just got there. They weren't on that list in 2010. <laughs> they've been on a roller now. coaster of performance. What's that? They've been on a roller coaster of performance over the years. <laughs> yeah, I was in the Apple store today, yeah. it was jam packed. Yeah. Yeah. Looked like Newport Beach in the summertime. All right, so now, the point I was trying to make there is there's a lot of stuff in your head about brands, isn't there? And that's what you're trying to do as branding experts with your customers, is you're trying to stuff your brand into their mind as well. Because that's going to aid you in the future as you try to sell your widgets. So why are brands important? People have choices today. And what do we do? We gravitate to what we know. And I use this example oftentimes with small communities that I'm dealing with. Let's just say somebody's driving down the freeway and they get off to get gas and they're hungry. It's a town they don't know anything about. There's a McDonald's right there and next is this divey looking place with 50 cars in front of it. As that traveler going down that freeway, where do you think you're apt to go? McDonald's. 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 Yeah. Why? Because you're familiar with the product. Brand expectations. You know what you're going to get for your five bucks or ten bucks. Now next door happens to be the very best burrito on the whole face of the earth, but you don't know it. And <clears throat> consumers tend to be, most of the time, risk averse. We go where we know. Okay? So we minimize the risk. Maximize satisfaction. And that last thing is very true, brand zombies. What the P&Gs and the Coca-Colas of the world want you to be is a brand zombie. And by that, what I mean is that you don't give one bit of thought to that purchase, you just go. 
Let me give a good example of that that, that is um, irrational and most people don't even know it. Um, Minute Maid orange juice. Minute Maid orange juice is from concentrate. And yet they compete with Tropicana and you know Florida, whatever, whatever all. They're all premium. They're all fresh squeezed. Yet people buy Minute Maid. My brother-in-law, who can afford to buy Minute Maid, they buy Minute Maid, and I say, no, 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 this is cheap orange juice. Right. They buy it because of the brand name. It's and the habitual, Canada. right. They don't think, right. and boy, like lemmings, if you can get them to line up like Starbucks, you've got it made. And it's not yes. the same quality. It's a, it's a lower quality product but, than yeah, the there's others. There's nothing about brand that necessarily reflects high quality. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. There may be. There could be an element of a brand, but it's not a guarantee. So in this world of choice, look at all the choices that we have. As consumers, we have tons of choices. Like, look at the websites. 367 million websites. I looked at the last one just yesterday. Took me a while to get through them all. <laughs> but I'm there. And there's some good ones, all right? But the thing that really amazes me, hang on one second, is look at dental floss. You go into Walgreens, and now you spend five hours because you got 64 choices of dental floss. The quandary you're in, and if you got 64 choices for dental floss, how many choices do you have for everything else? And so, as a marketer and as a branding person, you're having to create a brand that helps that customer make the decision. And it's a tough thing to do in the modern world. Yes, there was a question over there. Well, if you went through all those websites, did you see my future? <laughs> yeah. Um, the point here is you can brand anything, okay? And I'm a big believer of that. Doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna brand it well, or properly, or in the right direction, but let's talk about something, Starbucks. Okay, Starbucks prior, coffee's a commodity, right? It's some yeah. beans picked someplace, and, but they get you to drive halfway across town, stand in line, pay an exorbitant amount of money for bad coffee. That's branding. Okay, next, Nike. They go to Taiwan and they have some leather and they have some plastic and some glue and they create this thing called a shoe and then they get you to spend $200 to buy it. And they use celebrities to help you decide. That's yeah. branding. Yeah. Okay. Krispy Kreme, what is it? Sugar, 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 sugar. flour, <laughs> oil. And again, they get you to pay a premium for it. And then my favorite, the next one, Charm. Yeah, that was a P&G product where they were able to get you to actually think about Mr. Whipple, squeezably shot, soft, and the need to spend more for a branded product called Charm. Because, well, we don't have to talk about the benefits, but, um, and then now Live Work. Just put that on there as an example. We're in the process of branding Live Work. When you guys go home tonight, you're going to talk to people, oh, I went to such tonight. We learned all about branding. That was really nice that Live Work brought me in for that. Your appreciation for the Live Work brand just went up today. It's even better than an hour ago before you came here. Now, I'm not going to talk about what Ralph bought, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not the premium orange juice. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Family <laughs> So, in this very competitive world, we have to share with our customers what is our benefit, what makes us unique in their minds about what it is that we offer. And it has to be the overt benefit. The overt benefit is that thing above all other benefits. Right now, you saw those dental floss, they were all promoting various things. I just happen to use the one that slides well through the teeth. That's <laughs> their overt benefit for me. Um, but you have to be very good at identifying it. People say, oh, I, I can do this for you, 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 this for you. But do we really care? And we've heard that from everybody else. So we're just looking for that one thing that's really going to work for me, that's really going to be the, my benefit. Now, once you claim that you can create that benefit, you have to be able to deliver on that benefit. How many of us, for instance, the old days, taste great, less filling? Well, the less filling part was pretty good, but I don't know about the taste great part. It kind of tasted like watery beer, you know. <laughs> um, so when you make a claim and when you make a promise, you have to deliver on it. Now, here's something 
that many business people do not think about. Just because you can, does that mean you should? Just because you can create a product, does that mean your customers are gonna care one bit? Let's just say you move from Switzerland and you worked at Bali Shoe Company and you know how to make $400 shoes. Do you think Los Lunas is the best place to set up shop? No. Not necessarily. Los Lunas may be a great place to set up shop if you're close to your product and you have easy shipping. But yeah, all sorts of things. But who's going to go to your product? Right. Who can afford $400? You've got to be over in Scottsdale, Hollywood, Vegas. Right. Uh, yeah. So there's a matching between the product and the market, of course. But my point is just because you can make it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to sell it. I think part of that is that sometimes business owners, and this is probably a problem for a lot of them, is I know this is a great product. I love this product. The public will love this product, and they don't. You gotta know your market. Right. You gotta and, put yourself away from them. Yeah, there's something called the marketing concept, and that's where you actually go out into the market and you try to find what the needs of the market are and then you give them product. The selling concept is the other side where you typically create the product and then you work your damnedest to convince everybody they need to buy it. A okay, big difference. Especially in the world of social media and about marketing, which we'll be talking about in a second, that selling concept is pretty much dead these days. So that, well, I'll back up for a second. Oftentimes, people are under the impression that they have to create this mass awareness for their brand and for their product. But that's not really true. Remember we talked about Vans and Valley Shoes and Converse Shoes. What's really important is creating some relevance that will resonate with your targeted customers. It's a lot less expensive, fortunately, too. A friend of mine was part of a magazine called Outside Magazine. It's out of Santa Fe. It's one of the premier outdoor adventure publications. They charge a boatload, so to speak, for their ads in Outside Magazine. And why do you think they can get away with that? Because of high, high end clientele of Outside Magazine? Because the people that go and read Outside Magazine are what kind of people? Wealthy. Well, that's demographics. Doesn't matter how much money they have, it's the psychographics, they have, advent, they have interest in outdoor adventure. So if I'm a kayaking company or a mountain biking company or so forth, I would pay a premium to put my ad in Outside Magazine because I know everybody reading that magazine is potentially a targeted customer. Now even if TV Guide or some other publication came up to me and said, oh you could put your kayaking ad in here and it costs you a lot less, is it a good fit? Mm -hmm. People watching television, are they thinking about buying a kayak. Chances are that's not a really good fit. Probably not a good use of your money. Here's some terms to remember. First thing is called recognition. Okay. When we were talking about all those brands and saw all those logos and things, recognition is nothing more than the fact it's in there somewhere. You may not even know where it came from and why it's in there, but it's there. And that's a good thing, because if there's no recognition, kind of like that restaurant at the truck stop, no one's going to stop. Next thing is called recall. Okay, recall is thinking about the product, about the time you need to buy something. Sounds like somebody's on the, at the door. Recall is important. When you think about shoes, Jim, what kind of shoes brands do you think of? If you're going to buy a new pair of shoes. New Balance is what I use. New Balance, is that it's it? It's a well-known, oh, that's one I use regularly. But I'm Nike, Converse, some of the other. Yeah, yeah, so there's a few there's shoes. A lot, there's a lot of brands, but yeah. Yeah, there's a few, and they're, they're in there, yes. okay? Yes. And that's the recall part. And you want to, as a branding person, you want to make sure that you're at least in consideration. Right. That your customers, when they're thinking of your product, or thinking of the type of product you sell, think of your brand. <laughs> the next is called top of mind. Top of mind's a great thing. That means they think about you first, maybe second, maybe third, like you mentioned, New Balance. And then brand dominance is the last thing. Now that's great. There's very few companies today, I think, that really truly are brand dominant, where that's the only company you think of at that time. Now maybe somebody like the Isotopes, if you're thinking baseball in Albuquerque, maybe it's the Isotopes or 
nothing, right? You have no other choice. So one thing to think about, it's called the graveyard. Let's just say you have tons of recognition and you spend a lot of money creating recognition. Yet when it comes time to buy products, your customers aren't recalling you. That's a real bad place to be. Because no matter how much more money you spend to get them to recognize you, they already recognize you. For some reason, they're not buying your product. And that sounds like there needs to be a product overhaul somehow. Okay, two important points. Brand image versus brand identity. Brand image is what your customers think of you. Brand identity is what you want them to think of you. Typically, there's a big difference. What you do in branding is you try to move all those people's perceptions of you towards what you want them to think of you. If I think of myself as this amazing, fit, handsome person, and the women out there think of me as this horrible person, I've got some branding to do, don't I? I've got to somehow get them to think about me, or maybe I need to rebrand. Maybe I need to think of myself in a different perspective. But, but oftentimes, there's a big difference between what people think of your product and what you're actually delivering. So what do people think about your brand? And what are they doing? That's what you want to try to assess. And then through the branding process, you get them to think about the brand in the way you want them to think about your brand, which is what we're doing with Los Lunas. And getting them to do what we want them to do, like, oh, move here, relocate a business here, so forth. So um, it's kind of interesting when you, when you look at those two as to the difference. And, and when you ask your customers, oh, what do you think about my product? They'll tell you. And then you go back and you go, wow, that's totally different than what I thought I was selling. Why do they have that perception? And we're going to get closer to what the brand is all about. We're getting very close now. So what is a brand? It's the sum of all of your customers' experiences. That's the first point. If you call customer service for a company and they help you quickly and solve your problem, pro problems, what's your perception of that brand at that moment? Positive. Great. If you call and then it's a commu computer automated system and then you get hung up on and you got to call back and then you're talking to some far off land mm -hmm. and they still can't answer your, pro your, your problem, what's your perception of the brand at that point? Right. It sucks. It sucks. And, and so what happens is we have experiences, directly or indirectly. It may be that I say I'm going to an isotopes game, and you go, oh, they're in last place right now. Why would you do that? The perception all of a sudden just changed. Rather than me going to the game, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go bowl. So all of a sudden, and I don't even know if that's fact or not. He just told that to me. But he's enough of an influencer in my mind to change my perception at that very moment of the brand. And that's a very fast change in front of movies. Movies, you've got to get that brand out there quickly. Yes. And it's got to be positive. Right. Or the market or, determines very quickly, or oh, this is a dud. Don't even see it. Right. Straight to DVDs. Yeah. So the brand also resides in the mind of every customer. And it's different based on the individual experiences they've had. So let's just say I didn't listen to Ken. I go to the game. It's a great game. I'm loving life. All of a sudden, I'm a big fan of the isotopes. I even buy their t-shirts and hats and whatnot. So every interaction creates a perception, and it's different for every person. I remember when I was a waiter. Prime rib, same piece of prime rib. Cut off a piece, give it to one person. They're ranting and raving, and I get a tip. The very next piece of meat I give to somebody else, and they're like, what the hell is this? Take it back. Wow. The product's the same. Mm -hmm. The perception is totally different, isn't it? There's no difference in the product. What happened to that person? What's that? What happened to that person? I don't know. Did they wear it? <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is that a brand like the stock market is changing every single day. You if have favorable impressions. Shares. What's that? If <laughs> you have favorable impressions, it's good. If you have negative, it's bad. What you want is more favorable than negative. 
And that's what we're trying to do in the community of Los Lunas is create a favorable perception in the, in the market about what Lo, Los Lunas is as a place to live, to work, and to recreate. But see, one, one part of this that you haven't really discussed in detail is, while that's all important, the underlying product, whatever it is, has to have value. You cannot, for, I'm not saying this is happening, but it can be that a product, I mean, you're, you're selling this brand, you're doing a fantastic job of selling the brand, and yet you're neglecting the basic product that you're selling and over time, you, no matter how much you sell it, you lose market value, market position because of that. Right. So that's an important part yeah, of Yeah, and I didn't go equation. into the, the right. value proposition and whatnot, but in a brand, it's everything. And it is the physical benefits, it's the quality of the product, right. and the uses for the product, and all sorts of yeah. things. And right. if I, I can tell you know, how, how popular a brand is. One negative comment, you know, you've always heard one bad apple spoils the yeah. yes. one, bad, one bad comment about a brand, I'm dealing with this right now with Epson. Yeah. Everybody knows Epson. I've had an absolute horrible time. I put a thing on LinkedIn. I've got, from LinkedIn, 12 people I've never met that all suddenly decided, you know what, we're having the same problem. We're pulling the brand out of our operation. Right. They've lost about 700 projectors in a matter of two weeks. Right. Wow. The, um, the other thing about a brand, think about a politician when that one little piece of news comes yes. out. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the ratings are <laughs> the day before, they're, they're gone the next day. So the last thing that I wanted to make here is a brand is absolutely everything. There's also often a mis misconception that, oh, it's a slogan, it's a logo, or it's the product, or it's everything. It's how well you answer the phone. It's how well you respond to the customer's needs. It's the price of your product. It's the emotional side to your product. Everything is part of your product. Think about it, you go to a restaurant, you get a good waiter, bad waiter. Brand, the brand right there. Hotel, good, bad. Car runs well, runs crappy. All those sorts of things create the perception of the brand. So it's absolutely everything. So we're going to ask that question: What is a brand? Everything. everything. And where does it reside? In the mind of the customer. In the minds of your customers. So if that's all you take home tonight, you guys get an A plus. <laughs> all right. So we're going to show you quickly how some big companies position. All right. We're going to look at PNG. We're going to look at Ford. Or we're going to look at General Electric. So, Procter & Gamble, we've already been talking about them. They're a company with the overarching brand, P&G, that they don't market. They market what's called the sub-brand. All of these products here. And you're familiar with those products. So, that's their branding strategy. Let's go and push the sub-brand. So, when you're thinking about your company, your product, you can think about the same thing. Do I brand my company? Or do I brand my product? Or, like Ford, do you brand them together? It's always the Ford Mustang, the Ford F-150, or Ford Explorer, whatever it is. They like having the overarching brand and sub-brand together, always. That's their branding strategy. And at the other end of the continuum is GE. I can't tell you a single product of GE. Aircraft? Well, that's mm -hmm. the category. They make planes, mm -hmm. they make refrigerators, so all they want you to think about is in that category, if you're buying engines, aircraft engines, oh, let's go talk to GE. I can't tell you what that engine's called, what the model is, but they'll certainly tell me when I do call. So GE, unlike Procter & Gamble, they want you only to know the overarching brand, and they have no sub-brands at all that they deal with. Maybe some long model number. So there's different ways to go out in the marketplace as we see with these three companies. So quickly, some branding rules. Don't tell your clients how good you make your product. Any of you do that? You tell your customers how good your product makes them. Getting back to that benefit side. I was in Los Alamos last week talking to a group like you that were all PhDs. They could tell me everything about their rocket engines and their nuclear bombs, but they weren't able to clearly to say what their, their benefits were. Well, maybe nuclear bombs saving the world. I mean, that's a pretty good benefit, perhaps. So sometimes we get behind the, the features and we neglect the benefits of what's truly going to help our customers. Brand rule number two. Brand that captures the mind gains behavior. A brand that captures the heart gains commitment. What that means is, Get emotionally attached with your customers, right? 
I think you know, I've had been working with Los Lunas for about a year. You guys know me, right? Oh, yes. Well, yeah, I'm not just this guy that kind of comes in, at least I'm assuming that that's the case. That there's a rep rapport there. I mean, I'm getting to know the community members and so forth. So it's how one interacts with the customer. You get them involved on the emotional level rather than the fact, oh, here's that report you asked for, right? And rule number three, it's often neglected. Be sure to share what's going on in your company inside before you share it outside. That's why we've been working so hard building the brand inside the community, but Ralph was just in Las Vegas, Nevada last week? Last week. Last week beginning to share our external messaging, our branding with, with all those um, shopping centers. So we sort of pulled it together inside and now we're starting to share it outside, okay? Number four, <coughs> you cannot control a brand. Why? Because it resides in the mind of the customer. Well, what you can do is you can influence it. You can shape it, you can gently, it's like a teenager. <laughs> What are you going to do tonight? <laughs> you want them to kind of know that there's a, they should have a value system and they're going to go out into the world, but hopefully when they, when they come back, they're, they're still 100% intact. And then lastly, <clears throat> everything matters about a brand. And I think that's the main point. Now, what we're going to do to, to finish up is um, I'm going to share an example of a brand new company, which happens to be my brand new company. Once a Day Marketing was just an idea in December of 2011. Now we're May 30th, and Once a Day Marketing now is a business that I created to help small businesses and entrepreneurs be successful by marketing every day. That's my vision. I've dealt with small businesses for a long time. The mission is to provide knowledge, strategy, and the inspiration to get small businesses to market every day to be successful. And my feeling why many businesses fail, despite having great business plans, despite having great products, is they don't know enough about marketing or probably they don't market enough. So, once a day marketing, what does that imply? Oh, let's market once a day. So what I did at the start of the year is I went to SantaFe.com, which is the number one entertainment information site in Santa Fe to learn everything that's going on. And I went to the owner and I said, you know, I'd like to create a blog for SantaFe.com, Once a Day Marketing. And they said, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. Why don't you do that? So just on Tuesday, a couple of days ago, yesterday, I finished my 100th video blog that I've done since the start of the year. And I've become the number one blogger in Santa Fe with the sum of my blogs, people viewing it, equal to every other blogger's total. And it gets down to the fact that the blog is delivering content that people want. As opposed to somebody blogging for the sake of blogging, the blogs share information about how to be successful in business. So you can see blog after blog after blog after blog video blogs. And the unique positioning there is that it's video. People are writing blogs all the time, but we love to watch things. And so since I started this, we have 100 video blogs since the start of the year. Number one blogger at SantaFe.com. Almost 3,000 video views. Now that's nothing compared to Justin Bieber's video yesterday, whatever it was. <laughs> But that's 3,000 people who've come to my site to watch videos about marketing and branding. It's kind of like that outside magazine concept, isn't it? These are people that are interested in seeking out that information. From my home in Santa Fe where I do my daily blogs, I now have 44 states worth of followers and 79 countries. There's some countries I don't even recognize the names. I don't think they are countries. but and and. I now have close to 1,200 LinkedIn connections. I'm getting close to five a day of people saying hello to me, wanting to be connected to me. Almost 900 Twitter followers, and I've spent not one penny. But I have put in 350 hours of my time 
since the start of the year. And what has happened is that I'm creating a national presence for Once A Day Marketing, James Glover, and I use the tagline, that branding guy. And at the beginning of the year, you could not find me anywhere on Google. And now I'm first page on Google for all three of those. So the point I'm trying to make is that you can create a business with the right vision. And if you work hard at positioning it, you can find a market. The long-term goal, which is phase two for me, is to begin doing online consulting with people all over the world with respect to marketing and branding using the technologies of Skype and other things. So I'll be able to sit in my home and consult with people on branding using the technologies. But I figured they'd better know who I am first and believe in me before they're gonna give me their money. And so that's what I've been doing for the first five months. Season of front marketing first. What's that? Creating the brand. brand. And a good definition, you know that, that saying, um, your <laughs> reputation precedes you? That's what branding's all about. If you can walk into the room and say, oh, I'm Jim Glover from the Idea Group, and they go, I've heard of you, then your branding is working. The difference between branding and marketing, branding is what we've been talking about, creating that perception in the mind of your customers, and marketing is the communications of that message. So that's why I said branding is the most important. How can you begin marketing if you don't know who you are and what you're trying to tell people? The next thing Ralph and I are doing with respect to the community branding is now the marketing action plan. Now that we know what our brand is, we're gonna be determining who we're gonna tell this message to and how we're gonna tell this message and how much we're gonna spend and when are they gonna see it and all those sorts of things. Yes? If you had not done the video, if you had just done our standard written blog, where do you think you would be at now? I don't think I'd be anywhere near the same place. Yeah, not, I don't know. But that was my unique differentiator was a video blog. And now I come right into your little smartphone and there I am. I should start having my coffee in the morning on like the Today Show. Um, <laughs> I think we're dang close. Yes. Oh. oh, this is the last thing I want to share with you. We talked about branding. And brand positioning is where you finally sit down and you work through these five points to determine a brand statement of who you are. So you're gonna look at your target market, you're gonna look at what industry and frame of reference you're in, you're gonna look at what makes you different and the functional benefits, you're gonna put down why somebody should believe in you, and lastly, what emotional benefit they're gonna get. And I'm gonna give you two quick examples, and this is what Ralph's gonna send you, so you can take a look at it. First off, Nike. Let's take a look at Nike, go through this exercise. So Nike, two, who are their customers? They don't care if you're the fastest miler in the world or the slowest. They want athletes of all capabilities. Nike is an athletic apparel and sports equipment company, so that's the space they're in. You need to determine what space your business is in. The next, the point of difference. What makes Nike different? They've got shoes, they've got clothes, they've got golf clubs. They use the latest technologies to develop performance-based gear. And if you don't care that your gear wicks away water, or is going to absorb shock in your knees, or gonna allow you to drive a golf ball 100 yards further than somebody else, then you don't care about Nike. They want people who care. Because what does Nike do to prove it? They're out there in the marketplace with every major football team, basketball team, Tiger Woods, you name it, they're proving it out there, right? That's a reason to believe. And then what's the final emotional benefit? Customers can achieve peak performance for whatever their level is. So that's Nike. And then I thought I'd do once a day marketing it. And this is what you're gonna email everybody, Ralph. Yeah. These three pages right here. So, me, small businesses and entrepreneurs, what sort of space? I'm the one marketing and branding company that leverages digital technology, and that's what I love. I couldn't do this without the technologies. To provide knowledge, strategy, and inspir inspiration to businesses to brand and market every day, okay? Because, Jay Blower, that branding guy, has been generating innovative branding, marketing, and media strategies and tactics to leading companies for over 25 years. And what's the end result emotionally? Companies can achieve success 
by marketing every day. So that's sort of my positioning statement. So Ralph is going to email that to you. So you guys can sit down and go through this exercise. And this doesn't happen quickly. You have to really think about it. This is five months of me doing what I'm doing to even to get this part. And I'm sure that I'll change this over the next few months as well. So um, what I also encourage you to do, whether you go to YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, or Twitter, look up Once A Day Marketing and follow me. And there's already 100 videos there, so you can go catch up on everything I've done for the year. They're all about two, three minutes in length. And you can follow me every day in the future. And I'm like trying to pat you on the back every day, say, good job, you're thinking about marketing, you're gonna be a little bit more successful by the end of this day than you were at the start. And that's it. So questions? <coughs> Make sure that you have your email on the attendance sheet, this way I can send you the information tomorrow. Right, and you'll get these three sheets. Jim, yes. Throughout your presentation and in previous conversations, I'm always wavering between trying to trying to synthesize what you're saying as the, the, the core of it all is perception. And then sometimes I think no, it's really more image. Which well, is the more accurate? Is it perception in, in the That's a good question. I think I mean how I view it as the the viewer or is it image as in you know that, that something that you've created for me to see right and God that's a good question because image perception you know they're different yeah um, sides of the same thing right I'm a big fan of image just in general um, but I don't think some companies that sell low-end products care so much about that they're still successful. Well, maybe their image is just, you know, yeah. affordable. Right, exactly. But I think perception is key more than anything else. It's what perception you've created in the minds of potential customers, and it's different. Um, Would Walmart be a good example of that? Because well, not everybody has a great perception of Walmart. Right? That's, that's exactly right. right. Some people will. Not everybody has a great perception of Walmart, but everybody understands that image. Exactly. So, you know, I really don't want to go to Walmart, I hate Walmart, everything is about China, everything stinks, it's like a break, but what are you doing with my shopping yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it could come down that you have to go to Smith's now. But if you have a choice, and that's that's a good point, like Walmart or Target, let's say, we were talking about great yes. Target here. Walmart and Target, you know, what kind of person are you, perhaps? And it may be that you really want to go to Walmart, but you want people to see you in Target, that could be another reason you're shopping there. You know, I mean, there's, there's all sorts to, of... To me, that's kind of, that's kind of the, the, the crux of what he's asking. Do I... You know, image, so I understand the Walmart brand, I understand what it is, or the perception. Because you don't always have a great perception of the brand. It's huge yeah, to and, and from, a, brand. from a branding terminology kind of point of view, brand image is what people think of you. So by default, that is the perception they have of you. But like the airlines, I mean, I, I the airlines... People complain about the airlines from, um, you know, uh, this service or that service or this ad attribute of the service. But when they do surveys, the, it always comes down to price. How much is it going to cost me? So people bitch about various aspects of airline travel. But when the airlines do surveys to find out what people want, it's always about money. It's always about price. Right. So they bitch, but they they want the cheapest price in the airline. So sometimes, you know, you're it's the the. the aspect the, the what drives your business is behind your control right. in a and sense that, and sometimes you become a commodity and that's when you're only competing on price right. but if all things are the same right. then it does then matter a lot come down to price yes but usually yes. there's some sort of value proposition where everything isn't exactly right. the same True. True. Yes. whatever that slight difference might be and if you cannot create in the minds of your customers why you are number one yes. in that little world that you're in right. You've got some issues. Yeah. You know, Starbucks, I said, does an excellent job with um, brand. Oh, God, yes. They're not, they don't have the greatest coffee. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Starbucks, but people are zombies. They but go they, in there and they But they're not going, I, and I always, I, I actually cream neglected cream. a part. Part of the Starbucks brand is the experience the ex that they're giving you there as well. But the, yeah, someone is getting the experience. Yeah. Right. It, it's not just you coffee. It's a place to yes. go and meet with your friends right. and other sorts of things. That's so <coughs> it's a little bit different than just selling coffee. I mean, I don't know how many people hang out for hours at Dunkin' Donuts. Yes, right. <laughs> where the coffee is probably better. Depends on the person. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
person. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but, but it's just a different sort of thing. And they came out of the Pacific Northwest where it was wet and damp and you needed to go and get away and whatnot. And yeah. so, you know, it made a lot of sense that it seems to make us, I mean, in Santa Fe, we got two right across the street from each other. But Starbucks yeah. also does something very critical in a business, and that is market research. They determine, can this locality support our business? If they can't, they don't move there. Right. Yes. But they're not always great at that because they shut down hundreds and hundreds True. and hundreds yeah. of them. But that can be related to the economy. But right. a lot of companies don't understand that. No. Facet of and a market research is very yes. important. Sometimes you are Procter & Gamble and you'll spend millions of dollars to figure out your product's not going to work. Yeah. And other times it's just a gut reaction. Right? Another, uh, I just finished Jay Reddit, so it's growing. Uh, okay. His emphasis is in, in several places throughout the book, not just on you know, marketing, media, you know, what have you. He uses the word meme. Meme? M E M E. M E M E. What's that? Well, he seems to imply that it's it goes beyond a logo, it goes beyond an image, it goes to something that, that encapsulates the entire business and its and your experience with it. That it, that it's, a visual way of communicating what you can expect. Mm -hmm. Are you there yet? Are you, in, in, in terms of your marketing, is that a term that you're finding? I've, I've run across it in several contexts. No, but that's I, the I've only one where I really saw him develop it much. And it's not something he created? No. M-E-M-E? -E? I had to go look it up. It has to do with like anthrop cultural anthropology. It's like Oh really? Yeah. Blocks of ideas. It's, it's a new use happen. of an old word. Oh okay. Uh, it also sounds like me me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like mine. Yeah, like what's in it for me and me? You know, I want that's that over benefit. I want twice as much than you. But it seems to feel that, that there's there's a lot to be said for taking you know the logo idea or the or the slogan and trying to trying to take it to this next level. Right. Yeah, and, and it makes sense. I mean, the, a symbol like a, a logo or a slogan is trigger point. It's trying to get you to jump into that good perception you have in your mind of it, whatever it might be. Um, oh, you can see it. Yeah. On my logo, which just is, we're still in the process of developing it, but why the tick mark box? Anybody know? What's that? That is it. That's it. I want you to be thinking about, oh, I did my marketing today. So that's why we, we were playing with a whole bunch of things and then finally this came to my mind. I'm like, I like that. Because if you take away the, the one today below it, that'll be the logo chip eventually. It'll be like, hey, did you get it done? So that's what we're trying to find with that. So hopefully people will see that and if it gets into an app, they'll see that and they'll click on it and all that sorts of stuff. So there is some things there. And then the inspiring ideas inside the slogan there has a double entendre meaning. Inspiring ideas inside meaning inside once a day marketing, there's good ideas. And we're also inspiring ideas inside of you. So that's the slogan that we're working with. Let me ask a question. When it, in the movie business, a movie comes out, you have two movies. Uh, is it brand or marketing? Like if a, a movie comes out, uh, it, is it marketing or branding? Well, you know what I'm trying to say? Is I mean, let's, why do you think the DC Comics are doing so well? Yeah. Because they already have an established brand. Yes. We know Spider-Man, we know Superman, we know Batman, yeah. we know whatever. Okay. So there's a perception already, oh, that's a really cool hero. Yeah. And then, of course, they make the movie and then they try to convince you that it's good. Yeah. 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 That's marketing. Okay. And you're right, I mean, it can be killed overnight, whoever said that. One of the largest grossing movies ever. What's that? Marty can be one of the largest grossing movies ever. That's right, The Avengers. It's like two movies, like 1994, two movies came out, Shawshank Redemption, excellent movie, Forrest Gump, I think Shawshank, to me, I think Shawshank is a better movie, but, and that could be opinion, opinion. It seems like Forrest Gump, they um, marketed the movie better. It was branded, marketed, not many people saw Shawshank Redemption. I don't think it even made a hundred million dollars. Yeah, the it was name an excellent was, movie. Yeah, great movie, yeah, but a lousy name. Lousy name. Yeah, name doesn't tell you anything. Name doesn't tell you anything. I went there by chance. What you're not seeing also, movie. Ralph, is there's a lot of money spent in yeah. Hollywood to market to Hollywood. Yeah. Now, also, isn't that part yeah. of 
back to that, those two examples, yeah. it isn't part of the brand of the stars in the movie. The stars in the movie. Oh, absolutely. Yes, while obviously Shawshank Redemption has some great stars in it, yeah. none of them are, you know, the Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks brand. Yes, right, and he was hot. Really but also part of the reason for his come work was because you had this down and out guy who yeah. was, most people look down on him, he was the hero. And he's the underdog, and that was a, a part of the appeal of the movie. And yeah. they did some memorable clips that, you know, yes. long after, you didn't see the movie. And when I went to see the movie, it was both of them. Right. Forrest Gump was filled. I just, by accident, saw Shawshank Redemption. And to me, that was one of the best movies. It is very excellent movie. But we gravitate towards things like special effects. Special that movie effects. was filled with special effects. And sometimes a movie that's heavily marketed does well. Yeah. And it is a good movie, and other times it's yeah. heavily marketed, and it still does well, even though it sucks. The Hunger Games was heavily marketed, and it was only a so-so movie. But the buzz was so, they made such an incredible effort to market the movie. The yeah. buzz created, especially among young people, they had to see it, and yet it wasn't that good a movie. It wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't that great a movie. And then on the reverse side, sometimes a small independent feature that has no marketing dollars will yes. create right. buzz through word of mouth. Yes. The so it is, it is what we say has legs, and yeah. so it begins to increase. Oh, you got to see it. And, and if you can create word of mouth, by the way, for your own businesses, that's Literally, great. Yeah. So how, do you, how do you relate something like that, going back to that movie sample where really looking at Los Angeles, we don't have the big name brand, we don't have the national labs in here, we don't have you know, a major industry sitting here. So how does somebody like us bring in, how do we market without well, that's what we've brands? spent a lot of time figuring out and, and the tagline for Los Lunas now is small community big possibilities. But there are so many, many things here that we we pulled together, but if you think about it, and this is why you're here, I mean, you're close to Albuquerque, but you're not Albuquerque. You've got the buffered Isleta, so you're never gonna be encroached by that side. You got the real ground, you got I-25, you got the rail runner, you got affordability. The mountains are nearby. Yeah, there's a lot here. Outdoor recreation. Um, so there's a lot of things that people will seek out. Not one of you have a ball and chain on your leg. You're not here because you have to be, right? I'm gonna move Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've chosen to be here for a reason, and that what the branding will be and what we're trying to work on with Ralph is that sharing what the positive sides of this community are for people trying to make those kind of decisions. At least get it into consideration, top of mind. Mm -hmm. So when they're thinking about opening that new restaurant yes. or that new shopping store, whatever it is, at least Los Lunas is being considered. And it's a compelling story. I mean, when we yes. put your, your PowerPoint together for, in fact, you should share that sometime in one of these meetings, just go yes. through that. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Any other questions? Thank you. Good yeah, that was, that was great fun, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for sticking around. And I think, take as long as I thought. Okay. And I think that ends our meeting. You know, if anyone wants to join the program, you know, applications are there. And this, is, this lady here is a member of the program. She's All right. Program. Yeah. So. Glad to have her. And Good. what is your business? I do uh, web development. Web development? Yeah. Oh, very cool. So for who <coughs> you I'm working that out, but mostly what I've done is for agencies and state boards and online training.